Hi. How are you guys doing? Uh, Doctor Who, yeah. We're watching Adventure in Space and Time. I watched it yesterday. Today, Doctor Who. We jump right into it. So, okay, let's let's do a quick uh, intro to this series of videos before we actually begin. Uh, so my story with Doctor Who is that I, uh, it was very popular back in 2012, 2013, and I... I watched it. Uh, I started watching the the new series, the two thousand and five series, which uh, with the episode Rose and Christopher Eccleston uh, as the Doctor. So I watched series one, and then I watched uh, series two with David Tennant, three, four, uh, and then all the specials. Series five with Matt Smith, and uh, six and seven, and then I watched the fifty year anniversary special, and the time of the Doctor, which is a Christmas special. So I watched all of that shit. And then I stopped. Uh, uh, it wasn't really because Matt Smith left. It was because, I don't know, I just kind of lost interest, you know? Like, in the time uh, between the specials and season 8 coming out, I just kind of stopped caring that much. Um, so yeah, I never really watched Peter Capaldi's run. And now that it's over... I want to watch it. And also I'm having like a huge Doctor Who relapse. Part of that relapse is me watching reactions to Doctor Who. And I was like, man, I I really like those episodes. I really like watching people watch through this shit that I really, really loved back in 2013. So now it's 2018. It's five years later. We're going to watch some Doctor Who again. So, hi. Um, oh God, this might be the first series you guys have watched for me. The first video. Okay, so... Introductions, hi, I'm Matt, um, also known as Harut or Harut Live. That is the channel where all this shit is going into. Um, I'm from Argentina, which means I have a very shitty Argentinian accent. So, apologies for that. Uh, and that's really it. Really. There's not much I can let you guys know about. Uh, so, everything seems to be working properly, like audio, video, all that stuff, so... Let's go. We're going to start with Season 8, Episode 1, Deep Breath. Um, oh, by the way, I did kind of watch this episode five years ago, but I don't remember anything in it. Nothing. Uh, I remember like two scenes, but I don't remember anything in those scenes. I just remember a general image. So while watching this, my reaction is going to be mostly, uh, and oh yeah, I kind of remember that. This is the only Peter Capaldi episode I watch, and I don't remember anything from it because I was checked out. So, this is gonna be a sort of a rediscovery. So, yeah, uh, it would be kind of a first time reaction, but kind of not. Next episode should be first time at all, you know, completely. So, yeah, let's, let's just go. That is uh, Dinosaur in London. I remember none of this, I remember nothing here. I remember You've them. Like this kind no. of. Not since I was a little girl. Let's be honest. Is it choking? There seems to be some in lodge this front. Well, how could it time travel? I don't know. Perhaps it was something it ate. Hey, no, no. Yeah. I don't remember this, by the way. I don't remember nothing of that thing. But it's easy to guess. Laid an egg. It dropped a blue box marked police out of its mouth. Your grasp of biology it troubles me. It laid an egg. Wow. But you know, man, I don't really remember their names. Shush. Dopey. Grumpy. The green one? And they're not. Green one, or it could be the other way around. I mustn't prejudge. Wow. Thingy. The, uh, she the, looks like. Me one. They, they asking questions. She looks like shit. Names. Not my area. Clara! Well, it might be Clara, it might not be. It's a lottery. It is Clara. Well, I'm not really. I like it. You're gonna pass out, man. Dark. You're gonna pass out? Everyone, take five. That's a cloister bell. I don't understand. Who is he? Where's the doctor? Right here. Do you have to ask every time? It's pretty clear. That's the doctor. 
It's pretty clear it's him. Every time. I don't know why you ask. I mean, someone who does new intro. I actually really love this intro. I've seen it before. I love it just because of the graphics. The song is... It's alright, it's not bad, but the graphics alone just make this intro. Those eyes! Yeah! Those put up all the eyes, yeah. Who invented this room? It doesn't make any sense, look, it's only got a bed. Why is there only a bed in it? Because it's a bedroom, it's for sleeping in. Okay, what do you do when you're awake? You leave the room. So you've got a whole room for not being awake here. <laughs> but what's the point? You're just missing the room and don't look in that mirror. It's absolutely furious. Doctor, please. You I mean, he's not entirely wrong. What's gone wrong with your accent? Why do you... Nothing's wrong with her accent. You sound the same. <laughs> Brandon, you all sound all... Not English. Scottish. <laughs> it's back to being Quite Scottish. Fun. So what do we do? How do we fix him? Fix him? How do we change him back? Clara, you know how the drill goes. You know how this works. The dinosaurs just hanging out. Know. That's cool. Doctor's the one that speaks dinosaur. Speaks dinosaur? Excuse me. Okay then. You have good eyes. Your gift. I have bad eyes. And then? I hate that thing. I fucking hate it. Why are you wearing your veil? Crashing about everywhere. The doctor was gone. The TARDIS went haywire. He's not gone. He's upstairs. Carl, you know how this okay. works! You thought he was young? He looked young. He looked like your dashing young gentleman friend. Your lover, even. <laughs> Shut up. I wear a veil as he wore a face. For the same reason. What reason? <laughs> the oldest reason there is for anything. To be accepted. Chalk. It's a chalk. Okay, what are you doing? God, he went ham on that chalk. That Wait. one piece of chalk would have been enough. Mark. Ooh, pass. It's when just positive narration shit. When you stopped seeing it. Yeah, I was wondering about that. I just thought it was some sort of time skip for that. Whatever it takes, I will keep you safe. Okay, music is really good. I don't know what the fuck is happening, but the music was good for about 10 seconds, yeah. Dude, just go to sleep. She was scared and alone. I brought her here. Look what I did. With all the pretty brains are gawking. Then what is he? You can see half his face is not there. Oh, they brought the TARDIS. Okay, sorry. Morning, but he will always come looking for his box. And we will melt him with acid. Okay, that last part? And we will not melt him with acid. Old habits. You can see his fingers ah! being like... Why would we be serving together? The doctor's gonna come back, isn't he? I need clothes, that's what I need. And a big long scarf. No. We already done scarf, yeah. <laughs> uh, sir, I have never seen that face. It's funny because he has. I'm sure that I have. You know, I never know where the faces come from. They just pop up. Look, 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 look. Look, it's covered in lights. But I didn't do the frowning. Who frowned me this face? Do you ever look in the mirror and think, I've seen that face before? Yes. Ready? When? Boom. My face is fresh on now. Uh, Wait a second. Why did I choose this face? It's like I'm trying to tell myself something. It's like they're addressed. I like that I they're addressing the obvious question. But what is so important that I can't just tell myself what I'm thinking? What? Your face? Well, I don't like it either. But it's all right up until the eyebrows. <sighs> then it just goes haywire. Look at the eyebrows. <sighs> These are attack eyebrows. I love this eyebrow. They are mighty eyebrows indeed, sir. They're cross. Uh, Is that scored? I am Scottish, and I've gone Scottish. <laughs> yes, you are. You are definitely Scots, sir. You've been Scottish oh, before. Oh, no, that's good. 
Scott, I'm Scottish. I'm Scottish. I am Scottish. I can complain about things. I can really <laughs> complain about things now. No, wait. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. This is what I saw. Newspaper with a uh, recent murder. Oh, that poor guy. He just doesn't want to be dead. What devilry is this, sir? Spontaneous combustion. I don't know. It's a very... It's a very weird thing that happened at some point in history. Like, I remember reading on this. There's like six cases total across history. It's human beings can, with little or no inducement, simply explode. There have been nine reported incidents. Nine, okay. apparently exploding in the last month. And you think they weren't spontaneous? I think whoever killed the dinosaur... She's not baiting. I fucking knew it! By destroying the body so completely, you, you can, can see, see what is missing from What's it. missing? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That means that that guy took something from the dinosaur. We can't know it's from the doctor. Of course it's from the doctor, the impossible girl. That's what he calls me. But he says lunch, but not when or where. On the other side. The other side of the paper. Mentions from a restaurant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi. <coughs> What's wrong? I don't know. Maybe the smell? I know it's everywhere. An ordinary person wants to meet someone that they know very well for lunch. What do they do? Well, they probably get in touch and suggest lunch mm -hmm. okay so what kind of person would put a cryptic note in in a newspaper advert well i wouldn't like to say oh go on do say well i would say that that person would be an egomaniac needy game player sort of person oh thank you <laughs> well at least that hasn't changed i don't suppose it ever will no i don't suppose it will either it was no bother really i saw your advert i figured it out Happy to play your game. No. No, no, no I didn't play the ad. You play the ad. No, I didn't. Yes, you play the ad. I figured it out. Impossible girl. See, lunch. No, look, the impossible, that is a message from the impossible oh, girl. the impossible girl. If none of you invited each other, hmm. then... Well, if neither of us placed that ad, who placed that ad? Hang on. Ego, maniac, needy game player. This could be a trap. That was me. No, Clara, no. shut the yes, fuck up! Minding that. Clara, you were talking it. about me. Oh, uh, this is serious. Clara, what is happening right now in this restaurant to you and me is more important than your ego mania. You don't think it's more important than my ego mania? <laughs> right, you actually said that. You never mentioned oh, it again. Oh shit! Turn off my. It's it's a vanity trap. Unplug my headset. There's something extremely wrong. There's nothing else in this room. Mm, don't you Nobody's listen? breathing. Nobody's eating. They look fine to me. They're just eating. Are they? Are they? And you couldn't notice that before. Okay. Something else they're not doing. Breathing. Breathing. I like that. I like that filter, what do we do? that that grayed out filter over everyone. Okay, robot in a mask. It's a face. Yeah, it's a, it's very convincing. It's a real face. No, it's a face. More a sort of a automated organ collection station for the unwary diner. Sweeney Todd without the pies. Factually, an ancient spaceship probably buried for centuries. Functionally, a larder. Don't miss. <laughs> Where is it? Oh. Uh, oh, dick jokes. Oh, for God's sake, it. That is. Dormant. That Asian guy looks very, very, very old. They don't match. Of course. 
These hands don't belong to the same body. This is not your normal cyborg. This isn't a man turning himself into a robot. This is a robot turning himself into a man. Yeah, I kind of figured that out already. Oh, fuck. I feel like one of the first things you should pretend to be, pretend to be a robot. Okay. Stay go. still, stay still. I've seen this before. I'm missing something. Yes. Oh, I've seen this before. Yes, I remember it. Oh, Clara. Pretend to be a robot. Just stand still. Slow. There's no point in catching us both. Oh, give me the screwdriver. I might need it. Yes, 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 yes. Do that. Do that. What is that weird red effect on the sides? Bring her. Oh, okay. I it tried to be like the UI in a video game. I think. Kind of. To signify that she wasn't breathing that entire time until she fucking passed out. Whoever that you the UI has to be yellow and then red. Not red and then yellow. That's bad. That's not how video game work. That's bad UA design, man. Come on. There was another. Where is he? Mm. You will tell us. Yeah, I know. For what? You will die. Go on then. Do it. Go on then. Do it. You will be destroyed. Destroy me then. You need to keep this place down here a secret, don't you? Why don't you kill the dinosaur? We will not answer questions! Then you might as well kill me because I'm not talking again until you do. I want to know why to kill the dinosaur. Why would you need dinosaur parts? Within the optic nerve of the dinosaur is material of use to our computer systems. You've earned a whole dinosaur for a spare part. You know what's in a dinosaur's optic nerve, which means you've seen them before. Where is the other one? How long have you been rebuilding yourselves? That Chinese guy looks the pretty old. We will reach the promised land. The Become as gods. No, no. If the doctor is still the doctor. Fucking hate that eyeball close up, man. Because you can see behind it. Hello, hello. Rubbish robots from the dawn of time. Stop it. That suit looks good on him. It's very thin. This can use it to blow this whole room if I see one thing that I don't like. And that includes karaoke and mime, so take no chances. <laughs> see? Why are you here? But why did you invite us in the paper? It didn't. That was you, wasn't it? There's a fourth party. Third, third party. I hate being wrong in public. Everybody forget that happened. Clara, say the word. What word? They never sent you in here without a word. I don't want to say it. I've guessed it already. You're on the line. All right. Uh, Strax. Sorry. The establishment upstairs has been disabled with maximum prejudice, and the authorities summoned. Hang on, she called the police. We never do that. We should stop. We should <laughs> destroy us if you will. I like that. Still gonna close your restaurant. I like that a lot. Your friend is intelligent. He'll know better than to follow me. Logic doesn't work on a madman. What are you doing? I've got the horrible feeling I'm gonna have to kill you. But you might appreciate a drink first. Alright, this is a building flying. Alright, not the entire building. It's actually a ship inside the building. Alright. 51st century, right? Time traveling spaceship. Crashed in the past. They're trying to get home the long way around. I go to the promised land. So you keep saying. You can't patch up a spaceship with human remains. You know, this really is ringing a bell. Yes! You might got glove out of skin. We need more men. What shall tell us happening? The Strix has a gun! A laser gun! They shouldn't be losing! There would need to be a, a literal thousand of them for them to lose that fight. There it is. Out of control repair droids cannibalizing human beings. I know the 
this is familiar, but I just, I just can't seem to place it. It wasn't that long ago from our point of view, but for him, it might have been like a thousand years ago. The Eleven Doctor did spend like nine hundred years oh, during yeah, the time of the Doctor. What do you think of it, you? I do not think of it. I don't think that I don't feel it. Down there, everything is huge. Everything is so important. Every detail, every moment, every life clung to. I do remember this. Like, I don't remember the scene, but I do remember that line. I like seeing things from below. Everything looks so huge and important. I will reach the promised land. There isn't any promised land. This is just, it's a superstition that you have picked up from all the humanity you've stuffed inside yourself. You take a broom, you replace the hand, and then later you replace the brush. And you do that over and over again. Is it still the same broom answer? No, of course it isn't, but you can still sweep the floor, which is not strictly relevant. Skip that last part. You have replaced every piece of yourself, mechanical and organic, time and time again. There's not a trace of the original you left. You probably can't even remember where you got that face from. This is Dwarf Doctor's face, shot right there. That was cool. That was cool, that was really cool. He's looking at his own face, and then he's just kind of... Dumb machines. Then stop breathing again! Like, that's kind of dumb for me. Oh, he jumped off. Did he get impaled? Wow! That was unnecessary. Ooh. They didn't show us that. Who was the one that was lying? Did he solve the struct or did he murder him? Which one was it? Cool, 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 cool. Alright. You sure he's come back here? Alright. I fear we have lost him. I don't think I know who the doctor is anymore. Every time. I hear it. It would seem, my dear, you're very wrong about that. Clara! Give him hell, he'll always need it. Clara just immediately 180s. Does the TARDIS look like newer? I think it's the same TARDIS. I'm wrong. I'm immediately wrong. I'm not entirely convinced myself. I think there should be more round things on the walls. I used to have a lot of round things. I want to wear a purple. Yeah, I, I, I see it now. It's somewhat different. But not entirely different. Like, the entire... The style didn't change. I've lived for over two thousand years. By now, yes. I've made many mistakes. And it's about time that I did something about that. Clara, I'm not your boyfriend. And then I thought you were. I just said it was your mistake. What do you think? I like the thing. I like it. Long time ago, remember? You were given the number of a computer helpline, and you ended up phoning the TARDIS. Who gave you that number? The woman, the woman in the shop. And there's a woman out there who's very keen that we stay together. I'm home. If you want to be. But I don't think I know who you are anymore. Yeah, you better get it. That might be your boyfriend. I do remember this. Oh, it's coming. 
feel it. Why? Why did you do this? Because I think it's going to be a whopper. And however scared you are, Clara, the man you are with right now, the man I hope you are with, believe me, he is more scared than anything. Imagine right now. He needs you. So who is it? Is that the doctor? Is that the doctor? Yes. He sounds old. Please tell me I didn't get old anything <laughs> but old. Is he grey? Yeah. Goodbye, Matt. That's her only and last scene with Matt Smith. Goodbye, sir. Well. Well, what? He asked you a question. Will you help me? You should have been listening. I was there. I didn't need to. That was me talking. Yeah. Clara, come on. You can't see me, can you? You... You look at me and you, you can't see me. Do you have an idea what that's like? I'm not on the phone, I'm right here. Standing in front of you. Thank you. For what? I mean. I, I, I don't think that I'm a hugging person now. Right, shall we? Uh... He's so awkward. I love that. Okay. No! I'm Missy. You may Hi, Missy. I hope my boyfriend wasn't too mean to you. Now, did he push you out of that thing? Or did you fall? Couldn't really tell. He can be very mean. Sometimes. Which one was it? Except to me, of course, because he loves me so much. Where am I? Well, where do you think you are? We're not gonna know, right? You've made it. The promised land. Paradise. Welcome to heaven. Ooh, sorry, next episode stuff. Alright, that's it. Alright, that was Deep Breath. Um, I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. Uh, God, Clara can be so dense sometimes. I've I've heard a lot that a lot of people don't like Clara as well. I'm, I think I'm with them. Not, I don't, okay, I don't hate her. But she... Like, I remember Clara, and I've watched, like, The Day of the Doctor and all that stuff again uh, a couple of times recently, and she just doesn't feel that interesting. <laughs> she really doesn't. And at times, she... At times, it feels like she's more clever than she's supposed to be. Like, the writer is writing her dialogue, which is... I mean, that's always a guess, right? But... It just feels like that's the case with Clara sometimes. You forget she's a character. I mean, you for you forget that she's supposed to be a person, and you just immediately think, "Oh, this is a character that someone is writing," because her her words, her dialogues, just seem like you can see the person writing them. You know, she is at times too smart, or, or just knows too much, or she just says the exact same things that she needs to say in order for the scene to work, you know. It's it's weird. It's weird to explain, but that's kind of how I feel about her. And then she can be the complete opposite. She can be completely oblivious to everything. And it's not like she's completely oblivious, it's that 
the show can't decide whether or not she is completely oblivious or she's, she knows everything. Like here in Deep Breath, I just kept thinking to Day of the Doctor Clara, which she just completely understand everything perfectly immediately. And now here, she, when presented with information that she already knows, that the Doctor changes his face and regenerates and all that stuff immediately, um, she... It takes a long time for her to just even accept that that's the case. She's like, no, that's not the doctor. Where's the doctor? And it's like, god damn it, you, you know. You for a fact know. You have seen all of the other faces. Like, of all companions, you should be the one that is like, oh, okay, here we go again then. Like, you should be the one that doesn't make a big deal out of this. Because I keep remembering to Rose, and Rose was well, well written. Like, I didn't really like Rose Tyler that much, but she was well written. Like, absolutely. Rose was super hurt by Eccleston's regeneration into Tenant, but by the end of the episode, like, or not even by the end of the episode, but by the time the Tenant shows up, she's like, oh yeah, fuck. The doctor shows up, he's saving us all, and he's like, yeah, yeah, alright, I can roll with this. And Clara is. The entire episode, she's just like, no, I, I hate this guy. Who is this guy? He's not my doctor. He, he's not my boyfriend or whatever. That's also the thing that I don't like very much about Moffat Sarah. Um, there's a lot of uh, weird and awkward romance going on at all times. At all times. And things are incredibly, like... No, I'm, I don't know how to say that, so I won't, but, yeah, it's, there is a lot of, like, romance, and I'm like, yeah, I could do without it, because often it's just awkward, it really is, and there are some scenes that are also awkward, like, um, like that scene when Madame Master, Bastra just gives oxygen to Jenny, I'm like, alright, I'm not against lesbians on my screen that's great but it feels like that scene is just to remind you hey they have a relationship and they're lesbians and like that's the thing like i pretty much every scene that they had together i i think they referenced the fact that they're lesbians the fact that they're with each other at every scene and it's like you can have character traits that are other than your um, your sexual orientation or your relationship. You can have a character that is interesting on its own without without that, really. You can have a conversation between these two characters that does not go back to the relationship like at all times. You can just do that and it would be completely fine, trust me. So that's the one thing that I don't like very much. And... Um, yeah, the fact that the entire thing with Clara is that it's like, yeah, Matt was flirty, I mean, the Eleven Doctor was flirty, and she was flirty, and they were kind of had a thing, but not really, and now she's going through some shit, because it's like, sorry, the Doctor wasn't really your boyfriend, but it kind of feels like you lost your boyfriend, and they kept referencing the idea of boyfriend, and it's like, Alright, it's, it's good that they are kind of backing down on that, but at the same time, the fact that they keep referencing it, it's like, I don't know. Like, you can... That's, that's, that's the thing that I don't like, the fact... Whenever we get the Doctor, and we ha they're in some sort of weird relationship with their companion, you can just be friends and just hang out. And travels grows a pace in time and whatever, and just be friends. You know? Doesn't have to get awkward. Um, doesn't have to get awkward at all. And when it came to Rose Tyler, it was... Rose was well written. Rose was very well written, and the relationship she had with Tennant, it was pretty well written too. Um, because it was very... It was very romantic, and then Tennant just... Tana just couldn't... Well, okay, I'm not here to do a review of the previous 
uh, Russell T. Davies seasons, but I think they're great. And the development and any relationship he has with his companions, I think it's great. But I don't really like Moffat's era companions. Amy Pond really didn't do it for me. I think it got really awkward real quick, and it never really recovered from that on. And Clara as well, I don't know. I don't know about her. Um, I mean, I've okay. So we've only seen Clara for like half a season, plus uh, the the specials, and now we're gonna get to see Clara again. Uh, I don't know how long she will be in the show, but. I bet that we're gonna have her for like an extra season, maybe two seasons even. So I don't know. I I'm not gonna give too much shit to Clara. I'm I mean so far she's not very strong as a companion. I don't really feel too strongly about her. I kind of have a couple of issues with that, but I don't know. I'll I'll wait until we see her entire arc. And then we can talk shit on her, if needed. Um, okay, now let's talk about the actual episode. Deep Red. So, we got a return from the... I don't remember what the name of this machines are, but they're basically robots. They're like clockwork robots. And the last time, and I don't know if it was the first time, maybe it was, the time we saw them was in the episode... The girl in the fireplace, yeah, during Tenant's era, it was, uh, yeah, it was serious too, um, because Rose was there, Mickey was there, and that was a fan favorite episode. Like a lot of people really, really loved that episode, and it's not an episode that, it's not an episode that took the the gang in an adventure. It was a episode that just remained in one place which was the spaceship and then it went to France at times and that was really it um, so it wasn't very adventure wise but it had a pretty deep story kind of like and introduced this character Madame de Pompadour and she was like super interesting and the whole thing with the doctor and the whole way they they kept meeting each other like that was very very interesting and the episode ends hard and it hits you hard so it's an episode that it hits you it's it's a really good episode um i think it was written by moffat too so it makes sense that he decided to bring those uh, robots back and how were these robots here i like them uh, I did like the idea of just this robot that just crashed on Earth like so many thousands of years ago. Thousands. Okay, no, those robots actually knew the dinosaurs, which means that they have seen dinosaurs before, right? Which means that they were here when dinosaurs were around. How many years ago was that? 245 and 66 million years ago so yeah dinosaurs live I mean they live for a long time for almost like 200 million years and yeah 245 million years and 66 million years ago so those robots have been around for millions and millions of years apparently unless I understood something incorrectly because that number seems really bonkers that is a very high number of just time that those robots just lived here. It's crazy, really. But, okay, let's say, okay, let's say that those robots were here all that time. That's fine. Um, I really, really like the idea of just having these robots that keep, keep using humans and whatever shit they can find in order to replace themselves part by part until like the doctor said like there's not a single piece of you left that is part of the original design you're just a mishmash of whatever you could find that actually like fit and also the idea that this robots or this one guy robot i guess that was that was the main robot everyone else was just kind of mindless but this one was like we need to reach the promised land and it's like the promised land doesn't exist heaven doesn't exist but this robot keeps saying that it does exist I'm, I'm gonna reach there somehow and it's like 
it's clear that this robot has developed some kind of weird ideas of what okay a couple of weird human beliefs and ideas that this robot has collected over over the years and it's really weird it's really weird and it's really cool having robots with delusions of humanity and human concepts that's it i think that's super interesting i really like that um so we have that um the doctor's face Peter Capaldi's face so we had this moment of why did I choose this face I never know where the face come from uh, I do seem to remember this face but I can't really put it I can't really remember but it seems familiar and it's like yeah uh, in case people didn't know I'm gonna point it out that is the face of uh, what was his name Lucius no it wasn't Lucius maybe it was but it was the face of a person, a man who lived in Pompeii, and he encountered him during during David Tennant's era, during series four with Donna as the companion. Uh, it was the episode Fires of Pompeii. I think it was the second episode of the season. Actually, it was the first adventure, and the Doctor saved him. It saved uh, this man and saved his family. And that's the place where Peter Capaldi shows up, and I think he also shows up in Torchwood. I haven't really watched Torchwood, but I think he shows up there, portrays a regular dude or something. And I don't know. I think it's really cool that Peter Capaldi finally shows up again uh, in Doctor Who, and they actually do reference the fact that he has been here before. I, it's really cool that they just they just say it. It's like, yeah, there has to be a reason why I get these faces and. I think it's the first time we get like a we get like a, a hint that this face has come from somewhere. They're not just randomly generated. Which is what would what we usually think because like I think Eccleston said in the past, like, yeah, I could just show up with two heads or not head. That would be weird. Or some shit like that. And we and we, so we thought it was maybe randomly generated, but apparently not. Apparently these faces do come from somewhere, from some memory or something. And I think it's that's a really interesting idea, and I look forward for that to be somewhat addressed again. Right, I really like that. So, so this was Peter Capaldi's first story as the Doctor. How did I like Peter Capaldi? I really like him. I really like Peter Capaldi. I think he, I think he was great for the part. I think he's a great doctor, and and we we didn't really notice that for most of the episode, but at the end of the episode, we did get a an idea or a feeling of he's very awkward. He's a very awkward doctor. He's a very serious doctor. Um, he was kind of shy at the end because he doesn't want to be mean to Clara, um, of course, because. He cares about her, right? Um, but he was like, he he was like, I'm not a hugging person. He was just still, just like, please get away from me. And then he was like, all right, we can get coffee or chips or chips and coffee or whatever. <laughs> like, the acting in that scene was really great because it gave me a feel for the doctor more than any dialogue could. I mean, the dialogue was great too, but the acting by Capaldi himself made, gave me a great feel for how this Doctor is, or at least a general idea of how this Doctor is going to be like. And that was the awkward part of the Doctor, but then we also get a moment like uh, at the top of the balloon thing, of the ship, he's like, there's only one way out of this, and he just opens the door. and the. Rowwood is like self destruction is not part of my program or part of my design and the doctor says and murder is not part of mine which was a really weird that was a weird scene because that dialogue kinda came out of nowhere. It was like self destruction is not part of my program. That's okay, that's that makes sense. That makes sense like a dialogue 
someone would say in that scenario. But then the doctor is like, and murder is not part of mine. And that is like, okay, why did you say that, right? And, all right, the reason why you said it from a writing standpoint is because it's like, okay, um, we need to set this thing up so at the end, uh, the fucking robot just falls and gets impaled into the tower, which I think it was a little bit of an overkill, but still. And then we get the shot, the school shot of the 12 Doctor being like, just looking at the camera all intense, and then it's like, uh, oh, and between this, we did have the moment where they both kind of stopped fighting, and they were like, all right, one of, us, one of us is lying, and I think we both know which one it is. And it's like, yes, I know. And then the dude is impaled, and then we had that intense look at the camera, and then it's like, all right, which one was it? Was the robot lying about his self-destruct, or was the doctor lying about murder? Which one was it? And they just leave you waiting for an answer that just never comes. And I don't know if that is going to be addressed eventually. I don't think it will. Um, but we we know for a fact that the doctor can just... Can he? Can't the doctor just murder someone? Because we do think, like, yeah, you just murder all those people at the time war, you just kill everyone in Galfrey, but then it's like... The doctor has something to say about that. It's like, no, he actually didn't. So, I don't, And also, the 12th Doctor is a new man. So that just leaves you wondering. Alright? So that's that's cool. That was cool that they did that. But I still feel that dialogue was kind of forced during the first scene. Um, just like, murder is not part of my program. And then they just start fighting. And it's like, what started that fight? You know, we were just... We were both just talking and chilling. So, that's that. And then we have that scene at the end with Missy. This uh, this mysterious woman that just shows up and it's like, This is heaven. You reached your promise land. And the robot is like, huh. And she's like, yeah. And she just like kind of dances or whatever. And let's not ignore the elephant in the room. She does say like, um, her boyfriend, I think she says. Yeah, boyfriend. Uh, that would be the doctor, and she's like, yeah, I don't really know about his face, but it's okay, or whatever. I don't remember what she said, but she did heavily imply that she has a thing with the doctor. So yeah, we're just gonna see what the whole thing with Missy is. She's probably going to be set up, uh, or like, we're gonna he keep getting, like, random scenes with her, or some references that lead up to the season finale, and it's gonna be about her, I, I assume. So yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward for that. So Capaldi, 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 the Twelfth Doctor. I did say I like him. I'm interested in him. Um, I'm actually very interested in him. Like, there is something about Capaldi's Doctor that is just so interesting to me that I just want to keep watching. Like. We had the 10th Doctor and the 11th Doctor, and they're just both Doctors that are, like, very, very active and quirky, you know? And, I, I don't know, like, they're young, they're quirky, they're active, they're, I don't know, they're, I don't know how to describe them, but kind of like that. And then we have this new guy who just breaks the streak, you know? It's com it's it's the complete opposite. Like the twelfth doctor seems to be very awkward and very serious, and he looks super intense at times. He really does. But he's like super. <sighs> okay, that last scene led me to believe that he might he might be a little bit too shy, and that's cool. Or like too awkward, and it's like that's really cool. I really dig a doctor that's so just like weird, but not like weird crazy weird, but like weird I just want to leave you know like I, I really like that and like I said Capaldi did an amazing job I think he's gonna be a great doctor and I've heard okay I've heard people saying like Capaldi is the doctor that takes a while for you to like it and that might be the case it might be the case that 
Capaldo sucks, which just takes a while until we warm up to him. Because maybe the episodes that are coming up are, mm, you know, kind of whatever. Uh, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, uh, like, I've watched a number of classic Doctor Who episodes, and, like, I ended up liking every Doctor. Even the sixth one. The sixth Doctor I didn't think I would like, because he looks like shit. Not the actor, the outfit. The outfit looks like shit. Colin Baker did great. So I didn't really think I would like him too much. But then I was like, you know what? He's okay. Good job, Colin Baker. Um, so yeah. Uh, Twelfth Doctor. He's Scottish. Uh, Scottish doctors have been great. Fucking Tennant. He's Scottish. And he did an amazing job. He basically revived Doctor Who himself. And... Capaldi, I think he's doing great so far, and my personal favorite Doctor is the Seventh Doctor, and I, okay, I didn't watch every story of the Seventh Doctor, or, okay, so I watch a couple of, like, classic Doctor Who episodes just here and there, I didn't watch the whole thing, maybe we'll do a reaction series of that, but I, I would say that the Seventh Doctor, I think, is my favorite one. So yes, Scottish Doctors, there's something about them, they're great. So yeah, can't wait for the next episode. So, alright, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next episode. Bye.